Having a normal blood pH is vital for optimal human function. It's actually required for life itself. There are so many gurus out there on the interwebs talking about the alkaline diet and alkaline water that I started to look into this because it's very popular. A lot of people really believe this in their heart of hearts. And so I wanted to explain this to you after I'd done my research and let's dig into the alkaline diet and the alkaline water craze and see if it's really what it's cracked up to be or if it's a bunch of expensive foolishness. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician with 21 years of clinical practice experience, and we're gonna talk about the alkaline diet and alkaline water. The pH of blood in a healthy human being ranges somewhere between 7.35 and 7.45. Now, all doctors should be very familiar with this, but they should also be familiar with the mechanisms that keep this so tightly controlled and just how hard it is to shift the pH of blood in a human being who's alive with, with diet or with water. Before we jump into that, let's talk for a minute about how a doctor actually knows what your blood pH is. There are three tests that we can do but only one of them actually tells you the true pH of your blood. So the first way that you hear a lot of gurus out there talking about your pH is they'll check your urine pH. The urine pH of a healthy human being can range anywhere from 4.5 all the way up to eight. And all those numbers in between those two numbers are completely normal and not an indicator of pathology or disease or that you're eating too many acidic things or not eating enough alkaline things. The second way to check that some doctors think you can check your blood pH is to check a venous blood sample and see what the pH of that is. But any good ER doctor uh, or ICU doctor or any doctor who does intensive care of patients who are very sick and about to die knows that a venous blood sample never gives you the actual pH of the blood. The only way for a doctor to know what your pH actually is, is to check an arterial blood draw. And so this is gonna involve putting a needle directly into this artery or this artery or the artery in your femur or an artery in your neck. And that's how we draw blood in the emergency department and in the ICU. If we want an arterial blood gas, which is gonna give us the true reading of what your blood pH is. So if any doctor checks your urine or checks a venous blood sample and says, oh, your body's too acidic, that's a huge red flag that that doctor doesn't know what the hell they're talking about, or they're trying to trick you into buying a bunch of supplements or an alkaline water machine or something. Now let's talk about the actual pH scale. It ranges from zero to 14. And you, you, you would think that, oh, okay, if you go from a pH of five to a pH of six, then it's probably twice as acidic or, or you know, 50% more acidic. But actually each step from one number to the next is a 10 times difference in the acidity or the alkalinity of that sub substance. This is a logarithmic scale. It's not a linear scale. So going from one number to the next is a 10 times difference in the acidity or the alkalinity your body actually has three different mechanisms to keep your blood pH very, very tightly controlled between 7.35 and, and 7.45. The first one is the chemical system, which consists of a bicarbonate buffer, a phosphate buffer, and a protein buffer system. So these start to act immediately should your blood pH get out of hand the second way that your body acts to control your pH of your blood very, very tightly is your respiratory system. If your blood pH actually starts to move outside the normal range, your body can immediately instruct you to start taking either bigger breaths or smaller breaths, or to start breathing more often or less often. And this is kind of the second line defense. After the chemical component is already in action, you can actually have a respiratory uh, component that starts acting and this is completely unconscious you can be you could be unconscious and if your blood ph started to drift out of the normal range your body can immediately through your brainstem speed up your breathing slow down your breathing or make you take bigger or smaller breaths to keep your ph controlled 
The third component your body uses, which is a slower way to control your blood pH, is the metabolic component. And this acts predominantly through your kidneys. Your kidneys can either waste or hold back bicarbonate ions. And this can change the pH of your blood uh, not as rapidly as the chemical and the respiratory component, but it does do the job. So obviously to your body, it's very important that your pH is tightly controlled. Now, what about these alkaline diets and this alkaline water? Can just drinking a bottle of alkaline water really overcome all three components of your body's defense of having a normal blood pH? Can, can a bottle of water actually change your blood pH? Uh, can an can a alkaline meal, can that change your blood pH? The short answer is uh, no, not at all, not even a little bit. Uh, modern medicine has got many things wrong over the years. The cholesterol hypothesis, the salt hypothesis, many things come to mind. But what this do has done, and medicine was well-meaning in, in going down these wrong hypothetical roads, but what it's done is it's given the natural medicine space room to make claims like the alkaline diet and the alkaline water claim that you can actually adjust the pH of your blood by drinking some kind of water or eating some kind of food, anybody who tells you this has doesn't even have a basic understanding of human physiology and biochemistry. So let's do a little thought experiment. Let's follow a meal from your mouth down to the other sphincter and let's just see what the pH of this does. Now let's say that you ate a very alkaline meal because you had just seen a video by Dr. Sabi or Dr. Robert Young or some of the larger vegan influencers and you thought, man, I need to eat lots of alkaline foods. So you have this huge meal of wheatgrass and kale and cucumbers and avocados and bean sprouts and herbs and, and dried fruit and celery. And the average pH of that meal is nine, okay? Now, your stomach acid averages somewhere between a pH of 1.5 and 2.5, but we're just gonna call it two for simplicity, although many people's stomach acid is more acidic than that. So if your stomach pH is two and you just ate this big meal, I mean a big ass salad with all this stuff in it with a pH of nine, how much more acidic is your stomach acid than this meal? Well, you might think, well, it's twice as acidic or three times or 10 times as acidic with a pH of two versus a pH of nine that the meal had. Actually, your stomach acid is 10 million times more acidic than the most alkaline meal that you could possibly eat. And you have cells in your stomach that are happy to produce more hydrochloric acid if it's needed. And so within 60 seconds of this huge alkaline meal being ingested and swallowed and, and entering your acidic stomach, and just keep in mind, stomach acid can literally burn a hole in your dining room table if you put pure stomach acid on there. Uh, your stomach acid laughs at this alkaline meal. It completely neutralizes the alkalinity of that meal. And within 60 seconds, 90 seconds, all that alkalinity has been neutralized and now it is acidic. So, so much for the acidic meal. What if you drank a gallon of alkaline water? Right, that would have to neutralize the acidity and, and therefore raise the pH of your blood. Uh, no, remember, uh, so the most alkaline water out there on the market I could find has a pH of about 10. Your stomach acid has a pH of two. Your stomach acid is 100 million times more acidic than that gallon of alkaline water. And so within seconds, your body has neutralized the alkalinity of that water. That, the, all that alkalinity is gone. It's gone, okay, your, your stomach fixed that. So before we've ever even made it through the small intestine and then into the bloodstream so that we could affect the blood pH, all the alkalinity of this big ass salad and of, and of this gallon of alkaline water, all that alkalinity is gone before it is ever absorbed into the bloodstream. So most smart vegan influencers out there, they no longer talk about the alkaline diet or alkaline water because they know it's foolishness. 
They know what your stomach acid is and they know what it does to this. They know that they understand the basic human physiology behind this thing and how foolish it actually is. But there are still some vegan influencers out there who are not doctors or PhD researchers and they don't understand the basic human physiology of this equation and so they'll still repeat this lie. Many of these vegan influencers will tell you that meat is very acidic and you shouldn't eat it because it's so acidic. Well, let's take a look at meat and let's just see how acidic it is. When an animal, any animal, any animal on the planet is first harvested or slaughtered, whichever word you'd like to use, that animal's meat has a pH of about seven, just like yours, okay? Because you're an animal, that's an animal, the pH is, is roughly between seven and 7.45 of the meat. Now, a while after that animal is slaughtered, the glycogen in the meat breaks down into lactic acid and this lowers the pH a little bit, making the meat a little bit more acidic. But even after that, the, the meat is still gonna have a pH of 5.4 up to 5.7. And I actually found this graph that's very enter entertaining and educational. Uh, rib roast has a pH of 6.7. Bottom round has a pH of 8.2. Does that mean that a cut of bottom round beef would be good for people on an alkaline diet. And actually, if you dry age meat, the pH progressively rises back up more towards the alkaline side of the scale. So if you eat dry aged meat that's been aged for 30 or 60 days, it's actually alkaline. So is that okay on an alkaline diet? Just a thought. Many doctors will actually let their patients believe in the foolishness of an alkaline diet because in order to eat an alkaline diet, you're gonna have to eat lots of plants. And these doctors believe in their heart that a plant-based diet is the healthiest diet for humans to eat. I don't agree with that, but they let their patients believe this physiological foolishness because they really want their patients to eat more plants. But any doctor who remembers the first two years of their medical school training or their PhD training knows that there's no way. You could eat five pounds of kale. You're not gonna move your blood pH one-tenth of one point. You could eat five pounds of raw meat and you're not gonna move your blood pH one-tenth of one point. It doesn't work that way. Your body's been doing this for a long damn time for hundreds of thousands of, to millions of years, depending on who you listen to, your body is not gonna be fooled because you eat a lot of dried fruit or because you eat some raw beef liver. That's not gonna move your pH scale of your blood at all. In the same vein, drinking a gallon, drinking two gallons, drinking five gallons of alkaline water is not gonna move your blood pH one-tenth of one point. So if any doctor or any healthcare provider or any dietitian or nutritionist tells you either in your home or in a clinical setting, like a, their office, that your blood is too acidic, at that moment in time, you can safely know that they do not know basic human physiology or they're trying to trick you and you can safely stop listening to that healthcare provider about anything else because they don't even know the basics of how the human body works. The only time you should listen to a doctor if they tell you that your blood is acidic is if you're in the emergency department and you're about to die, or you're in the intensive care unit and you're about to die. In that setting, if a doctor tells you your blood is too acidic and they're gonna have to give you some IV medication to correct that, you better lay still and listen because that's the only times that a human being's pH becomes too acidic is when you've suffered a severe trauma or you've, you have some severe metabolic condition, then and only then will a doctor have to correct your blood pH. If you're, told, if you're, if you're up walking around, your blood pH by definition is within the normal range or you would not be up walking around and be conscious. A lot of doctors repeat the echo of this lie that, oh, if you eat a meat heavy diet, it, it, it ca it's too acidic and it can actually cause your body to pull calcium out of your bones and lead to osteoporosis because that meat's so acidic. Now we've talked previously about how meat's not actually very acidic at all. In some cases it's alkaline, depending on the cut and how long it's been aged. So where did this come from? Well, we've known since the 1920s that if you eat lots of meat, you're gonna urinate out 
lots of calcium. And doctors just had the opinion. They just assumed, and you know what happens if you assume something, right? Uh, they assumed that this, this calcium was being pulled out of the bones. But actually, when we looked into this, what happens is, is when you eat a diet full of meat, you're actually able to absorb much more of the calcium that's in your diet. Typically, you don't absorb that much. And so that's where the increased calcium was coming and being put into the bloodstream. The meat was helping you absorb more calcium. And therefore, you're going to pee out more calcium in your urine. At no point was the calcium in your bones touched. But this is a very common myth, and you'll hear that out there. I get at least one comment a week asking me about this myth. I put a link to the research showing that this is complete bullshit down in the show notes. If you hear anybody say that eating lots of meat will leach the calcium out of your bones, you know that they believe that you can adjust the pH of your blood by eating meat, which is just not true. People go out of their way to eat an alkaline diet, or they buy very expensive alkaline water, or they spend thousands of dollars on a machine in their for their home that actually will alkalinize the, the tap water. All of this is foolishness. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of money. It, it, you never, ever move the pH scale of your blood. Your body's way too smart for that. It's not gonna fall for alkaline diets or alkaline water or that $3,000 alkaline machine that you bought for your house. All of that stuff is a waste of time and money. I'm truly sorry if this video hurt anyone's feelings. The truth must be told. This is Dr. Barry, I'll see you next time.